Hey and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a hidden cash deck from Syndicate. This deck got me into pro rank from rank 3 in about a day's time, maybe one or two play sessions. And it's actually one of the archetypes that I love the best in the entire game. The first time I got to pro it was with the original hidden cash days and it was a lot of fun. But obviously since then some things changed and with this deck it has a bit more control than the previous version had which is very fun for me to play because I'm a huge stickler for control decks but at the same time there's a warm place in my heart for hidden cash. So to get into the revised list, something that's going to work during patch 8.5, we have Magic Lamp to start. Now even though there's a buff to Tiger's Eye given that you're able to gain 5 coins instead of 4, I still think it's very valuable to go with the Magic Lamp here because a lot of our units are getting tall and we have a lot of profit cards so we don't really need the extra profit. It might get a little bit awkward especially considering with Hidden Cash we're looking to hoard coin. So the save 5 points helps us get out of the round if we need to get out and if not we could stay in it with an extra 5 points on the board and that's fine. Now Pass the Floor is great, it's my favorite scenario by far. With this one here, whenever you play a blind eye, it progresses. So on the prologue, being when we play the card, it's going to spawn a passive floor of Peach, which is an engine. So that's going to gain one point per turn if we have two coin hoard in this case. So that happens. And then we have chapter one, we're able to gain six coins. And chapter two, spawn a Sly Seductress. So with Sly Seductress, it's a blind eye. And feet for three, gain the shield. We don't often use the shield ability with this one here because it's not really a good return it's a little bit diminishing however if we can have them bonded meaning two on the board then we have boost by one every single time the opponent plays a card otherwise it would just be boost by one whenever they play a unit now we're able to get a second um, Sly Seductress from the Adriano the Mink so that actually helps us get the bond that effect quite nicely I've seen other versions with Tin Boy being a card that damages all the units on the opponent's side of the board by two if we tribute eight. However, I tried Jocks instead with this one. Um, the original version had Tin Boy, and I found it sometimes awkward when I was playing against matchups that weren't swarming. I wasn't really getting that value, and Jocks really helps if we have like a short round, for example, because a lot of decks have a really good short round solution. So this made a lot of sense to throw back in the deck. And we're Devotion, so we get the added tag. Uh, whenever we play a fire swarm, I believe it's... Yeah, yeah, it's whenever... There he is. I'm looking at the wrong spot. So whenever we play a fire swarm card, game one, I was right the first time. So with that being said, we're not really going for this fire swarm tag, but what's nice about it is that we do have the veil status, which helps keep it protected, especially if you go tall in the jocks. But mainly we're just playing it for the 12 points it creates on deploy. Now, something that hasn't seen circulation in quite some time, but it's making a real comeback is Professor. On deploy, put a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by four. If I tribute three, you're able to ignore the unit's armor. So this is really good for the Skellige matchup where you're taking out the boats. Or if you're playing against the uh, original shield wall, for example, they have the frigate. You can just get rid of that without having to worry about the armor. It plays around dwarves quite nicely. It'll play around all those new armor buff decks that are coming out and stuff like that. So it's a really good card to have. When we play it, ideally we're looking to kill a unit that's for power. Or kind of use it in conjunction to Horse and Junior, and I'll get to that in a second uh, to help finish off a kill. But needless to say, we're getting coins on the return after the enemy's destroyed. So even if we can't kill it with the horse, and we can still poison it, and we'd end up getting the coin at the end of the day. So it's a really good card to have. It plays super well in short round. It helps try to take the round on even if we're going second. There's a lot of great uses for it that you'll see in this video. And then we have Horse and Junior. This card has insanity, so you could trigger the effect even if you can't afford to, but it would damage the unit by the fee cost. So keep that in mind. On deploy, damage a boosted enemy unit by 6. Gain a coin for every point of excess damage dealt. Now, we're playing Devotion, so let's pay attention to the Devotion Clause. Damage an enemy unit by stead, so it doesn't have to be boosted, right? That's huge with this. Uh, that's a new addition that they made for this patch uh, that makes the card very playable. And then Thief 3, destroy an enemy unit with 3 less power. Now, this was kind of my answer to Swarm, because it plays really well into the Deadeye matchup, for example, and I felt like Tin Boy and this were a little bit redundant for those. 
um, especially because this one's a lot easier to execute because we have a lot of coin floating around this deck. So this card is incredible. You can pretty much put this in every single Syndicate deck that's being played right now, whether it's Hidden Cash or Line Pockets or Off the Books, etc. It's really good to have this. And then we're moving on to Philippa. This is like an auto-include for me. Um, deploy, spend the number of coins equal to an enemy unit's power and seize it. Again, it's pretty well good in any solution. When they play their hero card, as long as we have the bank for it, we can take that card from them and take it off their side of the board, give us those immediate points, and maybe get some engine value at the same time. So it makes a lot of sense to include Philippa in this, especially because we have a lot of coin that we're going to be generating again. It's just another place to allocate it. Now, the Valdi Bank's really cool. This is like our own Nero Mancy sort of substitute. You profit three when you play the card but you're able to look at the top card of the deck plus an additional card for every coin you possess. So ideally you wanna play this when you have about six coin, giving you a nine card reach within your deck. And you don't really wanna play it in round one because you're probably gonna pull into a bunch of trash or you know, your lower end's bronze cards. So you wanna play it, I would say, ideally round three when the deck's limited and you're maybe missing that one gold card. And then you can spend, like I said, a, a coin for every card down it is within the deck until you find that card. So um, there's a little bit of issue with over profiting sometimes. So you wanna be mindful of when you're using Vivaldi and how far deep you're willing to go in the deck. Sometimes the good card at the bottom of the deck's not worth it if you're spending every coin you have to get there. And moving on to Flying Redanian, this is a great card. Horde nine on the end of your turn, some of this from the graveyard to or deck to a random row. So this one here is actually gonna be Horde 7, given that our leader ability takes down Horde values by two, keep in mind. So this is a really good way to thin out the deck, get the consistency going, especially because we don't have a Neuromancy and things like that. So the Flying Redanian really makes a difference in getting quick points on the board and reoccurring points on the board throughout the rounds. And I mentioned before, Adrian of the Minx meant to kick off Passiflora. Ideally, you wanna start the Passiflora prologue and just drop it and then to activate the first step of the scenario you want to play adriano and then you generally want to finish it off with a passiflora peach again or maybe um you know if you have to the street urchin so that's kind of the way that i would progress the scenario but this is going to spawn a slice seductress and help us get that bonded effect there might be times where you're missing um passiflora and it's just within your best interest to not take the tribute because the bonded effects really what we're looking for so at least then it's eight for eight the worst case scenario that you're getting from adrian of the mink now the next two are actually very good another sort of answer to the swarm that we're dealing with here with ewald damage an enemy unit by two if horse is in your graveyard damage an enemy unit by four instead fee one give an enemy unit bleeding uh for one so you can really go wide with this and get a lot of damage going and help kind of destroy things on their side of the field and if you don't get it in the specific order you're looking for it still works just great so with horse deploy gain three coins if ewald's in your graveyard gain six coins instead fee give an enemy unit vitality so you can keep things alive against damage decks this works really well against like the iced matchup for example and ewald for example works really well against the iraq swarm matchup so you can kind of play them accordingly if you have both in hand maybe you can mulligan one back in round one so that you can get the added added value later um it's hard to say i mean i would probably keep them even both if i had them in hand uh, they're just really good cards and they always get way more than what they're worth as far as provisions and Sol's always been good ideally you're looking for horde seven in this case because like i mentioned the horde value is reduced by two at the end of your turn boost self by three so what happens is most removal cards are like a five point four point maybe six point um this card actually exceeds the removal of most cards on its first turn of gaining three power so with that being said you can imagine in a long round if you can get nine or sorry seven coins quick this card's going to get out of control it's going to be way over 20 points might even be into 30 points if you're playing from 10 to zero right so this card's an amazing thing and it's going to force removal it's going to force the heat wave the yurden the big removal card and it's only seven provisions and we have so many other things left in deck that are going to deal with whatever they have to throw at us after that so it's awesome to have and generally you can play it round one to win it you could play it round two to bleed or you could play it round three if it's a long round if it's a short round three don't value this card that much i'd probably try and spend it earlier in the game if you know you're pushing for a short round three and of course sewer raiders 
Uh, this is something else I add to the deck. It's missing in a lot of different versions that I'm seeing, but I like consistency. I like playing more cards. I like playing all my cards. So with the Sewer Raiders, on Horde of Two in this case, summon all copies of the unit from your deck to the row. So you're going to be able to get both of them out there in round one and get quick points on the board. And of course, we mentioned the Pass the Floor of Peaches, Horde Two at the end of your turn boosts out by one. You can play this one. Uh, one freely in round one for example to open up if you need a proactive play But ideally you want to save one for the scenario as well. Keep that in mind the fist hex are like a dual function card Profit for poison unit. So basically this is going to be used for removal options as well This will work in synergy with the bounties or just removing something that's tall Of course we can use the coins and we can put them wherever we want after so it's really versatile It's probably one of my favorite crime cards overall and then of course going to be pumping coins into the sea jackal now, with a Fiat 2 boost self by 2, with a Horde of 7, but in this case a Horde of 5, boost self by 3 instead. So you're actually spending less than what you're getting here. It's a really good return on your investment, and it's definitely worth pumping a lot of coins in the Jackal. Be mindful that these will see tall removals, so don't greed it out too much. If there's ways that you can distribute the coins more effectively, maybe click the jackal a couple times and then spend on maybe working towards taking out some of their units that's where you're going to see the best return because when you put all your eggs in one basket things are bound to go wrong in some cases and of course we're devotion so we get really good value out of the mutants maker on deploy destroy an allied unit then gain three coins that's not the case because we're able to have just gain three coins instead so we're getting a seven for four but if you're using this in conjunction with the Sea Jackals, for example, it actually has a higher ceiling than 7. It's closer to 8 if you think about it because we're getting a positive return on the investment. And a lot of decks that I'm seeing have two of the Tide Cloak Ransackers. I opted for one because sometimes, you know, it's hard to get that Horde 3 and want to play this second um, in order to sorry horde 2 and want to play the second in order to get like the extra coin it's a little bit slow play especially because we have two of the makers so i just put one in there a little bit of damage a little bit of coins it's kind of nice to fill the gaps and fist tech traffickers again these are meant to finish poisons so if we don't have two fist techs in hand um we can go ahead and use the fist tech trafficker it does have a really nice second effect so if we don't have a two poisons to complete a kill on an enemy unit we can actually poison our own unit and gain three coins so worst case scenario this plays six for four as far as point value and that's really good with the street urchin it's probably one of my least favorite blind eyes because you're only getting profit three it's a two base power and it's an engine that you can pump coins into now it's not the best card in the world but it definitely helps proc the scenario so that's like the only purpose of having it in here is because we're very lean on the amount of blind eyes tags you know if you were going with tin boy you might have another one but in this case we have one two three four total and we need two to proc it so you have to keep that in mind when you're playing this deck but the street urchins mainly meant to fill that gap if you draw it in round one or two and you already have two blind eyes in hand and you have scenario and you're ready to play it i would probably mulligan back the street urchin here and look for something that's better value so that's pretty much it i recorded a few games before so i can show you guys exactly how it plays and i had a ton of fun doing it there are some very common matchups we have uh rack of swarm is one of them we have carapace kelly and i have a syndicate more or less mirror match they're not playing hidden cash but this just goes to show um some of the matchups you're going to see quite frequently on the ladder this month so stay tuned for that and if you guys like the video make sure to subscribe and support the channel I'm going to be doing as many deck guides as I feel like doing really in the next couple weeks. It's whenever I get inspired, I decide to throw something up. And generally what I'm posting is what I'm playing. So thanks for stopping by and we'll see you guys later. You crossed the wrong sorceress. I only loot corpses, except sometimes they're quite fresh.
anatomical changes slightly exceed my expectations. Premium grade won't be any better. My fist takes purest tears, purest in all nobody. You got a sea beast swimming in them breaches. Sit back, close your eyes. I'll wash it all away. You'll suffer the consequences of your foolishness. Yield and save me some time! Some stain on her conscience. Novigrad! I love the city!
enjoy it. You got a sea beast swimming in them breaches. Transformation robs them of speech. <laughs> we share the profits, not the work. are drowning in shite, but he heads in the clouds. Can you use this? Not sure for what just yet, but... As you're doing business with you. No mercy for your kind. Not the dead, you know, I'd imagine for our little rendezvous.
There'll be nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. Diamonds for little old me. Perhaps a different ingredient. Anyone can be bought. Only questions at what price. Is. Not sure to walk just yet, but... My fist takes purest tears, purest in all over that.
You'll suffer the consequences of your foolishness. Exploitation. Now try the alchemist. Think you can keep up with the Novigrad lads?
boot. So stand on a conscience. What you can simply take. Save humankind from my vision for its end. 